Welcome to the Call Guys podcast, co-hosted by Kevin Hopp and Ronan Passar. This podcast is all about sales development and the art and science of building high-performing outbound sales teams. Tune in weekly to hear live cold calls and also to hear Kevin and Ronan interview some of the top names in sales development. Let's dive right into this week's episode and see what we can learn. This episode is brought to you by Connect and Sell, your live conversation weapon. Teams that use Connect and Sell average five to 10 times more live conversations every day with their prospects. As a cold calling consultant, I've used every platform out there and simply put, Connect and Sell is the Cadillac of the sales acceleration space. If you haven't tried it out, your team can try it for free by clicking the link in the show notes below. All right, welcome back to another edition of the Call Guys Live Show, formerly known as Hop On Calls, formerly known as the Live Call Call In Show. That's what we're doing here. My name is Kevin Hop. With me today, Eddie Cortez. How are we doing? We're doing good. We're doing good. Can't complain, man. Doing what we love, right? Dude, I love it. Uh, I think you love it too, uh, which makes us kind of sickos, but we're going to get into that. We're going to talk about what that's done for us in our careers. And we're going to make some actual live, real cold calls. Okay. Eddie, we have some lists. We're going to make some actual cold calls. If this is your first time tuning into the show, let us know. Drop a drop a comment here. Let us know where in the world you're sitting. Um, we want to hear you. We want to hear from you. We're going to answer your questions as we go a bit here. But one of the things that I want everyone to keep in mind you're not going to hear both sides of the audio. Why? It's a legal thing. I know lawyers are annoying, uh, but you can hear both sides of the audio anywhere you get podcasts. Just look up the Call Guys podcast and you can hear both sides of the audio. We bleep all the PII there. It's pretty awesome. Shout out to Alexis Schroeder. Thanks for showing up. Thanks for popping in. Uh, oh, we got someone in Brooklyn here. Maxwell McEwen. Love it. Thank you for tuning into the show. Eddie, where are you sitting? Um, I'm based out of Monrovia, California, just about 20 minutes east of downtown L.A. Nice, nice. 20 minutes east of downtown L.A. Dude, we got some fans here. We got some fans yeah. here. Mateo. Shout out Mateo. Mateo and I go way back. Love that. That's my dog. Love it. Mateo, you want to come on the show one day, man? I know you know how to pick up the phone. I know you do, even though you're a video guy. <laughs> yeah on the show i witnessed him firsthand you know get in there with prospects so uh yeah he'd be great i love it cool so on my other monitor here i've got my connect and tell in my ear i'm gonna hit go so uh before i hit go i'm gonna talk about who i'm calling so i'm calling on behalf of the call guys we do sales development consulting and training that's what we do we teach teams how to do things like this we build sdr teams help founders answer a lot of those tough questions do I need an SDR team? What can I expect of them? What should I pay them? How should I train them? We got you. That's what the call guys do. So I'm going to be calling founders. Uh, Eddie, who are you calling today? And what are you calling them about? Yeah, so essentially I'll be working in the manufacturing vertical um, and I'll be calling on maintenance managers, um, maintenance supervisors, and I even sprinkled in a couple directors as well. So uh, middle management and uh, a little bit of director. Okay, cool. Uh, and uniquely what what is your what does your company do for them like what's the value there yeah absolutely you know nowadays 50 percent of teams uh in maintenance manage their day-to-day -day, like work orders preventative maintenance they manage them on spreadsheets and um you know i don't need to go how deep into how problematic that could be but um we help solve that by providing a simple easy to use solution that uh puts everything all in one place so the guys can focus on turning wrenches and making profits Okay. Okay. I dig it. I dig it. Well, let's start cold calling and let's hope that we get a lot of live connects today. Connect and Sell is going to help us do that. I'm in the queue here. Oh, hey, Edgar. Edgar. This is uh, Eddie calling with Limbo. How you been? Yeah. Hey, can you hear me there, Edgar? Sorry. Not sure if uh, you got me. Yeah. This is Eddie calling with Limbo. Um, hey, I know I'm calling you out of the blue, but um, 
I was just was curious, are you still the senior maintenance manager over there or uh, should I be connecting with somebody else? Okay, excellent. Uh, just wanted to confirm, right? So essentially the reason why I'm calling is, you know, I've been speaking to a ton of maintenance managers and supervisors as well as some directors who essentially tell me they're frustrated just because of the, the nature of the, the space right now. They feel like they have to do more with less for their maintenance teams due to the shallow labor pool as well as like the strained supply chain. And this is causing a lot of day-to-day -day maintenance tasks to slip through the cracks. So now I know everybody runs maintenance a little bit differently, but can you help me understand what you guys use today just to track maintenance? Yeah. Oh, so you're essentially asking how I got your number. Yeah. So um, we actually have a software to help uh, find important people like yourself on maintenance teams to chat with. Um, so I figured I'd learn a little bit about you and your team to see if this might even be relevant. So are you typically using like a spreadsheet, uh, maybe something like SAP, or do you guys use a CMMS currently to track maintenance? Yeah, no worries. I appreciate that. Um, is there anyone in corporate I can actually give a call about this? I can send him an email and get the conversation started. Got it. Thanks. All right. He did not go. want to play ball, but hey, first connect. Here we are. First live connect. I like that. Yeah. Uh, Frankie actually highlighted something that I, I wanted to take a second to highlight as well, which is you took that objection of like, how'd you find my number? Right. Which is probably what he said. I couldn't hear the other side, but I'm guessing that's what he said. Mm -hmm. And he actually turned it into a compliment. Like that is incredible. Right. Like that is, that's the next level move right there because a lot of reps would say, uh, uh, I found it in a database. And you said, no, we, we, we use software to help find important people like you. And now he's like, well, well you're right. I am <laughs> of course. I'm right. Had the ego there a little bit. And then you got, and you didn't waste any time. You didn't, you didn't pause there to let him ruminate on that and be like, ah, he's using software to find my, you said, so talk to me a little bit about what you're doing. You guys using spreadsheets? You guys using this? And we got back onto a topic driven conversation. So I think you did a fantastic job on that part. Thanks. Um, Thanks. What, what do you think was missing here? That I think, can I guess that the chief objection was uh, it's handled in corporate. Correct. Yeah. So we'll get that a lot. You know, there's parent companies, a lot of, uh, you know, companies roll up to the parent company and essentially we'll get that objection for some of the larger companies. And uh, it's, it's not too bad, but I would have loved to unpack their current state to at least identify what they're using, but he was playing his cards a little close to his chest just because he didn't feel he didn't, he didn't know me enough. There wasn't enough trust there, mm -hmm. but um, doesn't mean I won't get him back. Send him an email after this and uh, let him know, Hey, I'll give you a call again. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Um, uh, talking about emails, Mateo says, are, are they allowed to email them before, beforehand or is this a cold call? This show's about cold calling. Cold <laughs> calling. This is the hardest thing to do in sales. This is why people tune into the show. Uh, this is not about follow-ups. So if you call a follow-up, we'll all know because it's going to be an easy conversation. Cold calls are not easy conversations. And what you find, I've been doing this show for uh, eight months, right? What you find in cold calls is – probably 60 to 70 percent of what we can learn and what we can work on is all of the awkward little things that come with a cold call which is i didn't expect your call where did you get my number i'm busy right now you know who is this is this a sales call that is what actually happens in cold calls right so this is what i love about my show is that if you want to hear what a real live cold call is actually all about instead of a fake scripted one or a mock cold call this is as live as it gets so that's uh, right. very very much into that but uh the audience loving that call man good stuff uh hey jose this is eddie with limbo how you been uh doing well doing well um just uh wanted to give you a quick call here just just to make sure i'm talking to the right person you're still the uh maintenance manager right Oh, okay. Okay. Perfect. Just to make sure I got the right person. You know, people are retiring left and right. So um, yeah. Hey, look, the reason for the call is um, I've been speaking with a lot of maintenance managers and even some directors who say they feel stressed out just because they have to do more with less nowadays. And we all know what the shallow, shallow labor pool looks like and uh, the supply chain is even tough. So what's happening is um, maintenance tasks are falling through the cracks. And uh, I was just wanted to see like, can you help me understand how you're managing your maintenance today? Yeah. So essentially I was like trying to figure out if what we do might even be relevant, but um, you know, some teams are using like spreadsheets and manual work orders. Some teams are using like an ERP software, like SAP or something like that. And some teams are using a CMMS. So I'm just kind of curious on what you guys are using to track your work orders, preventative maintenance and things of those nature. Is that an ERP? I'm not too familiar with that one. Interesting. That sounds good. At least it's mobile. So it's not, you know, tied to like the desktop or anything. Um, so 
tell me a little bit about this. When work orders are coming in, um, how are you able to like prioritize the important ones versus just like the non-urgent ones so that the real the real work orders are getting completed and you actually have visibility in real time? What does that really look like for you? Okay, so that sounds like a pretty, uh, pretty good system so far. Um, I'm not sure if this is a priority for your team, but do you do a lot of preventative maintenance by chance? Yeah, so like the reason why is other maintenance teams that I talk to, um, they find it pretty difficult to track and manage preventative maintenance effectively. So they might have their work orders in order, but running PMs has been a headache. So can you kind of walk me through exactly how you manage PMs? Oh, invoicing as well. Probably one other big problem that you may or may not encounter, but other teams do is they notice it's pretty difficult to track like what parts are in stock or like forecasting for future inventory needs based on like historical data, maintenance schedules or, or equipment usage. Have you noticed any challenges around that? Yeah, no, that sounds fair. Sounds like you got it uh, pretty locked down and I think it seems pretty straightforward. Um, you know, most people I talk to that have something, there's either roof, room for improvement or they're pretty happy with what they have. So say on a scale of one through 10, how would you rate your system? Then, uh, you know, most people I talk to like that, that say, hey, their system's a 10. You know, I like to say we're not a fit for everybody. We're seems like you got a pretty good solution in place, which is great. So I wouldn't even recommend taking next steps. However, if you start to notice any challenges around tracking assets or inventory, or um, it's not even as easy to use, like any of those things come up, we can always get in touch a little bit later down the line. But right now, it probably doesn't make sense. It seems like you've got something good going. Yeah, absolutely, Jose. I appreciate the time. Oh, and by the way, last question. Uh, how many team, like how many people are on the maintenance team, by the way? Is it just you and a couple other guys? Okay, so two in the morning, two in the afternoon. Got it. Well, Jose, I appreciate the time. Thanks for uh, chatting with me, and uh, I'll let you get back to your day, but you have yourself a good week, okay? Absolutely. Bye now. Let's go. Dude, yeah. that was sick. Why was that Thank sick? You. Everybody watching out there, that was a pro move, like pro on pro, right? How many people that make cold calls for a living would actually go all the way down the river with someone and say, look, it doesn't make any sense for us to connect. I'm going to let you go. Peace amazing dude like yeah. I, I think you did so many good things Thanks. there that might have been one of the best calls that we've ever had on on this show like, that was all right awesome. hey you guys saw it first live in real time <laughs> man so many things that we got to talk about with that call right yeah i think i think the first thing is uh when you do your like little your little thing in the end where you ask them if you have the right person on the line I think there's a little bit of magic to that that gets them going, oh, no, no, yeah, that's me. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh, that's me. Oh, no, I'm the guy. And then we start talking about the business challenges and your valuable solutions to that. And as you were going through, you found that there were like two or three areas where he hit you with like a, nah, we're good. No, nah, no, nah, this mm -hmm. is good. And you just kept going, oh, okay, no, I totally understand that. But have you considered this? Have you thought about doing it that way? What about preventative maintenance? What about this? And as he was going through... Apparently, he's got, you know, 10 out of 10 system, right? Yeah. Yeah, that 10 out of 10. Can't beat that. I've never I've never heard that before, but I I, I, I absolutely love it. I might I might steal that from you. Oh, <laughs> please do. Please do. Steal. Share the wealth. Talk yeah. to me about that. Like, where, where'd, you, where'd you come up with that? Have you heard someone else use it or, or did you start using it? Like, talk to me about that a little bit. Yeah, so there's a few variations that we can use. Um, my team likes to use that one because it, that's it's pretty easy to deliver with great like execution. So to me, I'm like, okay, let me implement that. So I have a couple variations. Like another one could be, hey, like, would you say there's room for improvement with your current system, or um, is it exceeding your expectations? Right. Most people aren't going to say it's exceeding their expectations, or they're going to say, oh, there's always room for improvement. So. Um, a simple one through 10 question is typically a little bit more scalable for SDRs because it's a real easy question to deliver. So we went with that one today. Dude, fantastic. Because uh, not everybody's in market, right? Like, there's a concept totally. that I've talked about many, many times in this show that the more you understand it, the more cold calling, like you start to understand the nature of cold calling. And the concept is like the buyer's pyramid, right? Yeah. The buyer's pyramid, just to go over it real quick, one more time for the audience here. The yeah, good stuff is the concept that most of your market, so this very top one to three percent, the very top of this is your total addressable market, right? Your TAM. Boop. One of the things SDRs should understand is that in your total addressable market of all the people you could sell to, only one to three percent is like, yes, my hair is on fire and I need a fire extinguisher right now, right? 
I have a problem. I'm looking for a solution. And guess what? Your marketing team should be doing a decent job of trying to get those people to come to them, right? That's called demand capture. Now, to get to the lower parts of this pyramid, which is actually way more, way more people, you have to do what's called demand generation, <laughs> which is the idea of going out and talking about the problems, introducing what you do as a valuable solution. So we can do this with SDR teams. We can do some marketing. We can do it with content. We can do it with thought leadership. You do it with a lot of things. But what's really important, what, what we need to focus on here is this piece at the bottom, which I would argue, which is about you know three out of 10 conversations you have. They don't have a problem. They're not looking for a solution. So if we know we're going to like talk to people where we can't help three out of 10 times, what you did there was absolutely textbook to say, look, I don't even recommend we, we take any next steps right now. But you, what, you got a 10 out of 10 system? I, I'm not in the business of making 11s. I'm in the business of turning sixes into nines. I'm in the business of turning fours into tens. Right. So without a business challenge, they're not going to have any need to change. Right. And sales has changed. We can talk about that, too, in a little bit here. But man, I'm fired. Love it, dude. I'm fired up. And yeah, let's go. I'm jealous as hell. I'm getting into the queue here. Hey, could we go back to a quick point on that last call? I see a question here in the chat from uh, my guy, Marvin. You mind if I answer that? Do it. All right. So. I'm not sure if you guys got it, but for us, there is some qualification criteria. Essentially, we want to see how large of a maintenance team they have. So um, one reason why when somebody's not in market, I want to see if maybe if I can go higher above that person. If the, if the team is large enough, there's always a decision maker that might have different priorities. So that'll be dictated by how large that team is. So when I close that call by learning how big of a team they are, it kind of gives me a different strategy when I reapproach the account um, to figure out maybe I just need to go director level or VP level so that I can talk top down instead of bottom up. What oh, hey, Carlos, can you hear me? Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, hey, this is Eddie calling with Limbo. How have you been? I'm doing good, doing good. Uh, I actually wanted to give you a call. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, one second, no problem. Yeah, hey, Carlos. Um, just well, just want to confirm I have the right person, right? Um, you're still the regional manager over there, right, for the maintenance team? Okay, perfect. Um, excellent. So, hey, look, the reason why I'm actually calling today is um, I've been speaking with a lot of maintenance teams, like maintenance managers, directors, even some VPs, uh, who've been telling me that um, – you know, they've been a little stressed out just because they've been forced to do more with less, you know, you know labor pool right now. And the like the supply chain is pretty tough. So housing a lot of maintenance guys to slip through the cracks. And I'm just kind of curious to hear what, what your team's using today to track maintenance. Yeah, no, fingers crossed everything's okay on your end. I'll let you get back to that. Um, and then I'll give you a call a little bit later. Thanks, Carlos. Yeah, absolutely. Bye. Bye. Ooh, not a good right. time for a shot. Yeah, he said his son was in the hospital and he was there to give him a call in an hour. So, you know, I don't want to be that guy. He said, what? His son's in the hospital? Man, sometimes, I, I mean, I, I've, I've said this many times on this show, like I, it will never cease to amaze me when people pick up cold calls.